Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and in the, today's video um, I wanted to show you guys a little bit of um, how I made this bracer. And it's a leather bracer made from vegetable tanned leather that was cut from second use scrap leather, in my second or third use, like it's a pretty small uh, piece. But um, I'm going to go ahead and click play here. And you can see it's getting kind of lined up. Uh, I start by with a wing divider kind of etching in along the edges of the piece of the leather because whenever I picked this piece up I didn't really know what I was doing I wasn't I wanted to capture the process on video but I didn't have like a tutorial in mind um, so I was just kind of like eh, just doing it I had cased it like an hour or two before so it was a little damp but I did squirt it in my spritz bottle to wet it up a little bit. I'm cutting with a swivel knife um, into those lines that I did with the wing divider because at this point I thought I was just gonna like do a border on it and dye it and be like call it done just a real simple piece but then the more I kept working on it the more I'm like you know this is a really nice surface so I start trying to freehand some knot work and the more I'm looking at it the more I'm like I don't know what I'm doing <laughs> you know so um I actually used the back of it to soak up some water off the surface, grabbed a piece of scrap paper, traced around the outside. I'm darkening those lines in a little bit. Oddly enough, this scrap paper that I'm using was pretty hard to draw on wet. Like it didn't grab the graphite very well. So I'm marking out some little dots to do my knot work. I kind of wish I'd been using a darker pencil or that it wasn't at night. Um, so that you guys could see what I was doing a little bit more, but I had three dots and then three dots and then three dots. So as they got farther in, like it tried to keep it proportionate. And now here I'm just connecting some of those dots, making some knot work. I think I might make some videos in the future just specifically on my thought process processes behind when I'm designing my knot work, just to give y'all, you, you know, it, it's fake it till you make it. <laughs> So I'm kind of have them radiating down and I'm doing some of the cross ones, cross lines, kind of bringing it together because I'd like a, a sense of symmetry and I just, I didn't know exactly what I was doing. Oh, excuse me for this bracer. Yeah, it's a sleepy kind of afternoon. I don't know if y'all can see, but Randy is passed out on the couch back there with a Sam dog in his lap. I love that man so much. <laughs> okay, back to work though. So I'm kind of got my kneaded eraser that also wet paper is difficult to erase on. Um, just FYI. Um, now I'm coming through and turning the individual lines into what I call ribbons. Um, and that's of the knot work. And that way you can establish what's coming over and then under and like kind of, you know, just lining it out a little bit. Um, that's something that if you want to get into doing your own knot work and stuff, it, it'll come with practice and with time. So be patient with yourself, be persistent, and just practice a whole bunch. That's why I always do it in pencil first, because you can erase. <laughs> and so I changed my mind about having it trail off. I decided to end the ends in diamonds. And that's something too, is usually I do a lot of like spirally curvy knot work. This one I ended up doing pretty angular, uh, which I like how it came out. Just finishing up those lines and now I'm coming through with a sharpie marker to really bold it up a little bit um, and y'all can see and the difference between having a sharp knot work and a rounded knot work is just that rounding it you know so it's you could take this same design and um, retrace back over it but give it like rounder edging and everything and really make it give it a very different look so I'm holding it up and I decide to cut it out. At first I'm cutting it out on the lines uh, that I initially like traced over, but I decided it was really difficult to get it to be perfectly centered since I'd already done the edge lines. So you can see here I'm trimming it in much closer to the actual line art and that way I can see where it's going to lay in relation to the rest of the bracer. I'm also looking at it and I'm not sure why in hindsight, but I cut the thing in half. And I was like, oh, Vaughn, what did you just do? But then I was like, no, we can do this. We can make this work. Um, and what I decided was I wanted it mirror imaged symmetrical because with the knot work, it still kind of has a little bit of a grain to it. 
Um, and so this way it makes it completely mirror image symmetrical down the center. I'm using the rounded end of a stylus to transfer the design and now you can see I'm actually scratching it in with just the pointy end of a stylus. My big old head's getting in the way. <laughs> I'm just scratching it in a little bit and you can see that that's the consistency that I like to work with my leather is that it is damp but you can line it and just that touching of it dries it out. I've taken the page and flipped it so now it'll be mirror image and the sharpie kind of you can't see as much here in this video but um the sharpie still showed through just a bit on the back so i'm just tracing over and i'm going to go through and continue that motif but where it all merged in the center i didn't have it go where it was going one over and one under i just had it to where it met up and then reconverged again like made it look like you know one continuous ribbon oh excuse me hey so now excuse me get some coffee in me I'm going through with my swivel knife it's a broad bladed swivel knife which they do have some at the time of recording they have a couple more swivel knives like this on the Tandy Leather website but they're on clearance um, so get it while you can but there's also like I'm sure you could find other blades that are broad like that online I just really like it because it cuts a wide deep solid bold line um, in one go like you can achieve the same effect with um, one of the angled swivel knives but you can sometimes you have to go over two or three times to get the same depth and width as what I get with one pass over on this guy whenever I'm cutting I want to make sure that I'm not coming all the way to the line like if I cut here whoop, cut and then I'm cutting here I don't touch this line there's actually just a little bit of leather right there and that keeps me from getting like a little frayed edge and it also prevents me from overcutting, which you cannot undo now here I'm experimenting a bit with um, it's a tool called an undercutter I had never used one before you guys I'd gotten it at Tandy leather because I'm addicted um, and I wanted to see if I could give the leather like a little bit more of an actual woven effect like if I could come through and really make it look like that one piece was going under that other piece um, so I'm just going over to where each of the cross points like if this is a ribbon coming down and this is a ribbon coming over for this section of the ribbon like right there I'm pointing with my nose I'm sorry um but just where they intercede like I didn't want to exceed to like over here never mind um <laughs> I was messing around going through tooling all of it to show a greater depth in the weaving in hindsight I don't really know if it was worth it but it didn't hurt the end result at all to try and experiment around with this I think maybe if I were working with a thicker pieces piece of leather this one here was only about three maybe four millimeters thick so I would go with something that was like seven millimeters thick. I think that would be fun to mess around with an undercutter and kind of see um, what could be accomplished with that and so now I'm going through with a um, it's a textured beveler and I use the large one more often than not and I'm just coming through I don't I don't know exactly what I'm doing at this point I also realize this is not the best camera angle but live and learn <laughs> um, it definitely does make it easy to to work around the camera because I actually have it on a selfie stick like stuck in the drawers like looking over from above me but um I think maybe if I paired that one with another camera that were like right down here or like maybe off to the side just something that could catch what I'm doing a little bit more at tool level but uh I do end up deciding to just tool all the way around now this is a modeling tool that I come in you use the undercutter and it actually cuts under the other part of the leather and then you can use this tool to like lift it or it's a lifter tool um it's a bunch of different names for it it's, it's less important what it's called more important what it does or the potential of what it does um and I'm trying to again lift these little ribbons and stuff and I'm just not knowing how it's working
more research is necessary. <laughs> But I'm going through now um, tooling with the angled beveler, the textured beveler, um, along all of the lines. I'm trying to give it a really nice kind of depth. Because that's something that whenever you're using this modeling tool to kind of like uh, lift the leather, it leaves a little bit of bruising and burnishing um, on this part over here. And so it's, that was something I wasn't very pleased with. Um, in some of the other videos I had watched uh, by Tandy Leather, um, so I think it was actually Springfield Leather, um, I was watching him use it and he used a backgrounding tool. So I, I started going through after I finished all of my beveling um, and used a backgrounder. So again, I think I'm really interested to see, I don't know if y'all can hear, but Randy's snoring, it's so cute. Um, I'm really excited to experiment more with the um, lifter or undercutter or whatever it's called just with this concept of getting a flat piece of leather to look like multiple pieces interwoven with each other. Still just tooling and beveling around. This stuff I put it into like four times speed and I kind of lost some of the footage like I don't know if I lost it or if I just didn't record it or if it got deleted by accident or what but I totally left out of this video the entire process of <laughs> um, dyeing it, which all I did was I used um, Briar Brown Antique Gel over the whole thing, and then I used Black Fibings Oil Dye uh, on the edging and on the knotwork. And I can't believe I left it out because I was like, I'm going to show people what it didn't. Nope. <laughs> oh, I just threw Randy's pliers. That's how upset I am about this, you guys. More tooling. More tooling. There's always more tooling. Um, but it's so worth it, though. It's the only way to get that nice three-dimensional textured feel. And I'm just smoothing out my work. Am I using a backgrounder yet? I don't know. And that's... Another reason why I feel like it's important for me to do videos like this and to come through and watch it with y'all and try to talk to you about what I'm doing is because I'm like, if I can't even tell what I'm doing, I really need to do something different because otherwise, how on earth are any of y'all going to know what's going on? So I wanted to thank you guys for your patience and your great suggestions that a lot of you have. Now for this one, I am going through and uh, beveling around the edging. Just, I like that kind of inset look. Just, I don't know. We all have our preferences, and I really like this. <laughs> but I do, <clears throat> I do really like to do um, hand-drawn knot work on pieces like this, because if I were using a pre-existing template, or like a uh, going through with a modeling tool and kind of just opening up and lining things up a little bit more. Um, if I were going through with a pre-made template, it doesn't always necessarily fit the shape of what you're doing. And the more, like, if I could talk to past, past Vaughn, <laughs> um, I would get try to give encouraging words of the more you do this, I know it's hard now, trying to get good at doing your own hand-drawn knot work uh, without graph paper, without references, but the more you do it now, the better you'll be a week from now, a month from now, a decade from now. And that's the perspective that I have of this, is I've been doing crafty crap like this for like ten, nine, nine years professionally, 10 years just, you know, on my own. Um, and it's like, it has gotten a lot easier, but it's built on those baby steps of, you know, maybe take take something that you had a template for and just try extending the lines on it. Again, we'll revisit this in a tutorial where I show you guys how to modify a pre-existing knot work to suit something very specific and custom. <clears throat> so now I'm going through with a textured backgrounding tool. I have a couple of them. I have like a large, medium, and small in here. I'm actually just using the large and medium because none of the um, areas I was filling in needed 
a small. And I was about to point at the screen, but I realized y'all can't see, but it's like on the little inside parts of the knot work um, is where I'm using the backgrounder right now. And it's, it's a backgrounder that just looks a little bit like one of those meat tenderizing hammers. It's just all points. And those are great for, um, at this point in the project, I know that I'm going to use an antique gel. Probably Briar Brown, because it's my favorite. Um, <laughs> which I did. And it, it, it was beautiful. Like, every time that color comes out, just my absolute favorite. Um, so, with all the little holes that this backgrounder makes in the leather, um, well, this little indent, you know, tooling it, it captures that antique gel really well and gives it a really nice contrast. Again, kind of wishing I had a thicker leather because then, you know, those indents could have been deeper. I really like the depth contrast as well. So it's like I want it to pop. <laughs> you can just see the hammer going. There was another thing. I watched a video. I'm sorry, I'm getting excited. I was watching videos, you guys, on YouTube here on the internet um, and this feller has this tool that's like a little jackhammer that you hold in your hand and it has like you put a tool in the end of it and it just like like does I was like dang I'll need that one day because like this shoulder already like when I'm belly dancing and stuff it's so grindy and like pops and and I'm I'm sure it's because yeah I can feel it popping right now it's because I'm just hammering all the time <laughs> um, we were we were at Tandy Leather, and I ran into this feller um, who does armor and all sorts of stuff. And he had said that he ripped the muscle and tendons from the bone and had to get surgery in his shoulder. And I was like, "Dude!" And he's like, "Leather working?" And I was like, "That's my future right there. Got to go to yoga or something." <laughs> ah, that's a good looking background, though. And I tried to. Um, be consistent because just like how you I, there's a goal for me to achieve that depth contrast I want this to be an even depth and this to be an even depth and with some of the backgrounders you can really get like choppy results and don't ever be afraid to just go back through and kind of try to even it back out the more you practice and do this the better you will get at it I've got one of my first pieces of leather working I ever did laying around here somewhere and I'm going through and just, again, trying to touch up some of the line work. Because this one, I felt like I had never overworked a piece of leather before. But I did start to feel like this one was getting a little overworked. Like it was starting to look muddy in my eye. But it's, again, it, sometimes it's really good whenever you're working on a piece. If you're just feeling like it keeps not and keeps not and keeps not being what you want it to be. Kind of step away for a bit. Go make yourself a fresh cup of coffee, stretch your legs, or, or tea. Tea's very delicious too. Um, and it's just, just come back at it with fresh eyes later. Because then you could be like, well, let's just do this. And it's like, oh, that's so much better. <laughs> you know, so sometimes stepping away and getting a fresh perspective on it. Blast it, Vaughn, where you ever learn to keep <laughs> your video in frame? I don't think I will. But... I'll try to be patient with me if you will, so. It's looking pretty good though. Just cleaning up some of the lines again. I actually started going through and just undercutting, like using the lifter tool on all of it. <laughs> and I actually think what happened here is the camera died or I needed to like go plug it in or something and then that's why I didn't catch my staining it. So there's that. Oh, I did like the shape when because I'm watching this happen. I remember, yeah, big gap. Oh. so yeah, you can see I'm using Aussie wax, and I just get some on my finger, and I do the back first to kind of like warm up the leather, if that makes sense. So I'm smearing it on the way you would like Vaseline on like chapstick or uh, chapped lips, and then buffing it in with it's um a piece of old blue jean is all. And um, I'm using some beeswax to run along the edges of the leather and then using my slicker. Like that's my favorite way of finishing the edges. Like I have some tragantha gum or something, um, but I don't know, I accidentally ate some. Like it was like under my fingernail or something and it was like, I'm always sticking my hands in my mouth. I'm such a like Neanderthal. But um, 
uh, it doesn't taste good at all. So I'd much rather get beeswax in my mouth. And this is my new favorite way of rubbing in the uh, Aussie wax is with just a shoe polish brush. And it really, I feel like it gets all of the Aussie wax out of the tooling and everything. And I'm just eyeballing it, but I'm popping some holes, quarter inch holes for uh, some eyelets. And now I'm digging out the, uh, the anvil and the driver for my eyelets. It's taking a while because of course I can never find them. They're just in the drawer where they go, but I have to like unbury the drawer. So you can see the anvil's just got the side that you would put like little donut half looking of the uh, eyelet in. And you just hammer it down, place another one, hammer it down, place another, hammer it down. <laughs> it's nothing if not repetitive. Okay, so those are set. Yeah, and I just, I just like using the little brush on it. Like it's, I like the sound and the motion of it, but it gets the Aussie wax everywhere, but also pulls it up out of all of the texturing. Now I'm using the 3 8 maybe, a uh, paracord. And I can't find a lighter. So I'm running around the house trying to find a lighter. Randy's looking for me too, and it's just, it's a mess. We buy like 10 packs of lighters. We're not smokers. So it's not like we're like losing lighters all over the place. I don't even know where they go. I have them only for lighting candles and paracord and incense. So it's like, you know, for the longest time we had two in each room and they're all gone. <laughs> like, I don't know what I do with them. People I don't. There we go. <laughs> so found a lighter and uh, I'm just melting the ends a bit. Get my hands wet and like finish the ends kind of rolling and relaxing the um the leather out before lacing it up and then just tight with a little overhand knot trying it on now instead of paracord you could totally they have some stretchy shoelaces on the market that are pretty cool um, really great for just having it laced up and leaving it tied and then just putting your hand through it whenever you want to put it on but you can still put it on by yourself and just like a new pair of boots it's still pretty stiff but the more a person would wear it the more relaxed and conformed to your arm it would become just doing an overhand knot and that's it that's how I make bracers for inventory in our booth um, I do hope that this was helpful to you guys on some level. Uh, I want to thank you for hanging out with me while I kind of watched it and chatted with you all. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas, please leave them down below. Um, if you enjoy my free tutorials and would like to support the creation of more of them, as well as participate in my periodic giveaways, like we do like fairy house and art giveaways. I also do, um, well, to participate in those, go check us out on Patreon. There's a link down in the video description below. Um, it's just Patreon, Back to Earth Creations. Like, if you Google Back to Earth Creations, that's all of our social media and stuff. Um, but if you pledge a dollar, it puts your name in the hat for all of our giveaways once. If you pledge five dollars, it puts your name in all the hats five times. And then also, um, five dollars, you get access to, like patron exclusive stuff that's like behind the scenes and all kinds of it. just I'm coming up with new stuff all the time just to really I want you guys to feel like you're getting your money's worth in addition to supporting the artists and education efforts that we're doing here so if you pledge ten dollars or more you still get your name in all the giveaways once but you also get a gift or a kit of materials mailed to you every month it's your preference <coughs> excuse me we do like different stuff every month so it's like um one month you could get wire wrapping stuff the next month you could get the materials for chain mail the next month you could get um something that I handmade you know if you're like just send me something surprise me um it's it's really fun so great way to uh, give you some of the stuff that we're using in the tutorials um so yeah go check us out on there uh please like and share with your friends if you like it and if you have friends that think they might like it so I'm gonna go now and probably join Randy for that nap. He is, he is dead to the world, you guys. He's adorable though. Okay, I love all of you. Have a wonderful day and happy crafting. Bye. <laughs>